Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. We tested various cylinder head bolts and head studs recently, and many of you guys had some questions and pretty superstitious sounding tricks and tips when it comes to installing head studs, and especially factory style torque to yield bolts. As a matter of fact, I've been hearing many of these my whole life, so let's take a look at some of your favorites, which include leaving the head bolt overnight before retorquing, reusing torque to yield bolts, which the factory says is a big no no the effects heat has on bolt tension, what happens if you torque ARP head studs without lube, and yes, it's even been suggested you should hit these with a hammer to help settle them for final torquing. So let's get into it. First up is not quite a myth, but is a prevailing claim among many of our viewers and engine builders. ARP's Custom H 625 Plus head studs, are they the strongest head studs on the market, period? And thanks to a viewer of ours, Patrick, who coordinated this one being sent to us, we have one for LS engines, which we've been testing. At $820 a set, they are also the most expensive head studs or bolts we've tested as well, which means they will need to unseat our until now top dog stud, which goes by the name L19, which you're not allowed to touch with your bare hands for fear of hydrogen embrittlement, but have proved to be the strongest we've tested, earning its 260,000 PSI yield strength claim. One it also shares with this custom age 625 plus example, which you are free to touch, and it is sure nice to touch, the nicest, most solid feeling threads these hands have ever touched for sure. Unlike their 8740 and ARP 2000 fare, CA625 studs use specific and different part number nuts, which we can only assume means beefier as well. And that should help these 716 top fine threads reach their 100 foot pound torque spec the highest we've seen for this size, and 10 foot-pounds over the L19 studs we bought, so should make for some good starting head clamping pressure. Let's find out. Using ARP's suggested torque procedure, we see as high as 4,800 PSI, which eventually settles down to the mid-4500s. This is well up on the L19 stud we saw 3,600 PSI from which admittedly is a longer style of LS1 stud, but we previously saw a little difference from longer versus shorter studs when they come from the same kit. So CA625 already topping one category here, starting head clamping pressure, which should help for high boost applications. Let's see if we can make it pop and measure that stretch along the way. Here we're finally taking your guys' advice in the comment section, setting up this to indicate from the bottom and perhaps save some dial indicators in the process. Though poking it here now starts us off at negative two thou, let's throw 6,500 PSI at it as usual in our first step. So we're seeing just seven thousandths under the typical Young's modulus curve we normally see. Perhaps that's just from starting so high in base tension to begin with. Let's push the hydraulics to 110% and throw 13 to 14 tons at this one. So 9,857 PSI, 27,000 pounds or 12,270 kilograms at this stud, and it stretched just 27 thousandths. TTY bolts stretch more than that just during their torquing procedure. That puts this example out front from everything we've tested better than the L19 up here, albeit that is in the longer stud section, but it's a big difference. Just look at it versus the ARP 2000 here, this being shown with a plus because we weren't able to make it go pop like the rest of these. Expensive for a reason, it seems. Okay, on to some more myth type matters. We'll call this myth A. That is, in our testing, we really should be using multi-layer gaskets to test the head bolts as you guys are saying. So typically we want to remove as many variables as possible, especially potentially squishy ones if we just want to test bolt stretch, but point taken. Here's testing with another Felpro OEM style TTY bolt from our large set with a head gasket. This settles to about 2400, which is less than the 2550 we've seen before, but you'll see more TTY bolts coming up and we'll leave that up to you to judge whether this looks like it's in a normal range. 
So myth number two, heat affects bolt tension, or that we need to be testing cylinder head bolts and studs considering hot engine running conditions as well. We measured an engine that had been running for a while on its outside casting, not inside where the kabooms happen, at 220 degrees, but it is typical for them to reach 240, maybe 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So with wet rags around the cylinder to hopefully curb some heat there where the hydraulics are, we spent 20 to 30 minutes periodically heating up the effective cylinder head and our representative block off and on until this bolt reached temperature and it sure does increase bolt tension noticeably near 3000 psi here when the bolt is 245 degrees and that climbed and climbed a bit further in the next 15 to 20 minutes as it sat up to 3081 psi sort of makes sense as materials are expanding from that heat. But what does that do to the bolt tension once it's returned to an ambient temperature? To answer that, we need to test the second most mentioned myth by our viewers, that you should finish torquing cylinder head fasteners the next day, or that allowing them to rest will, I don't know, relax the bolts so that your final torquing can make more for a meaningful one that stays. So let's see if we can observe that by relaxing it, as it were, in myth number two. Here's another freshly torqued sequence TTY bolt, which eventually settles down to 2385 PSI. And here it is 24 hours later, 2160 PSI, a loss of 225. But while this is a closed off sealed hydraulic system that doesn't show any signs of leaking, it is hydraulics, which with anything as simple as maybe an air bubble, Perhaps that could affect it, I don't know. In any case, we need to see if this phenomenon happens in the old fashioned way with just measuring torque, just as another source for data. Now, one downside of TTY bolts is that once you're done with the torquing sequence, you're using degrees rather than foot pounds with a torque wrench. So there's no real way to check them later. You have no idea how much torque it took to turn them that final 90 degrees. Car companies use these degrees because with a given thread pitch, it's a more reliable way to put a torqued yield bolt into its yielding range, which has a pretty consistent amount of expected tension. You can ignore a lot of things like friction or K-factor, bolt prep, and no washers are needed under the bolt head. So we did the LS1 torque sequence with a torque wrench attached to an angle gauge and no hydraulics involved just to see the value for ourselves. After the second 90 degree rotation, that needed a full 94.6 foot-pounds to complete that 90 degrees, which is above nearly all the ARP hardware we've used. But remember, the goal here is basically to stretch these bolts to the yielding point, basically to the point where they'd be ruined for X amount of bolt tension, which is not the strategy for ARP hardware, which you reuse. By making this mark and then waiting 24 hours, we can revisit the same bolt with that same 94.6 foot-pounds and see if it moves at all. And sure enough, it certainly does travel with the same amount of torque applied again the next day. This is two points of data that support this so far. But let's see with head studs if we see similar. We torqued this head stud with 71 foot-pounds and proper ARP grease 24 hours ago with markings. So it looks like it may have slightly budged here when revisiting that 71 foot-pounds. Hard to say though certainly nowhere near the TTY bolt of the same length into the same materials. Now I'd call this myth plausible. If you want to wait a day, I don't really see the downside unless engineers are baking in some type of logic into factoring this difference. Perhaps versus what we saw on the studs, TTY bolts having to twist the whole length of the bolt into the block to tighten things up is doing more than just clamping, but actually introducing axial torque tension and this time dissipates that a bit something turning a nut and washer wouldn't do on a stud. But we still have a glaring omission up here. 24 hours after we heated up the 2550 PSI torqued yield bolt up to 3081 PSI in tension, we're now seeing 2280 PSI in ambient conditions. The same percentage drop we saw with the TTY bolt that never saw heat in the first place. So we're also calling this one plausible depending on your meaning. If your theory is that engine temps do increase bolt tension in general, well yeah, that's myth confirmed. Although typical engine temperatures permanently changing the tension of a bolt, we've not seen anything to support that yet. Moving on to, yes, hitting these with a hammer. More than one person suggested 
Quote, my dad told me about an old racer's trick a while ago when we were building the engine for my truck, and I would be curious if there's any merit to it. Basically, you torque the head bolt down, then you hit it with a hammer to shock it and take the twist out of it. Then torque it again and get more torque out of it. Easy enough for us to test, so let's see first with a custom age 625 head stud, starting at 4,645 PSI. So if anything, it budged it up a bit, but it did settle down to the same after this. So let's see with a TTY bolt to shock the twist out of something you do need it to be twisted. Unlike a stud, bolts are pre-twisted to begin with. Starting from 2,339 or so, with a punch first, it didn't really help any. But a hammer does lower it to 2,294. That's a 45 PSI reduction. You're welcome to interpret that as you will. We are hammering on hydraulics after all, but I'm gonna call that a myth, not very significant. And when we checked this versus the line marking method, the bolt did not move any extra with the same amount of torque. In bolt tension, this is equivalent to overshooting your 90 degree final step by less than a degree. As a quick sort of myth B, we have for you torquing this head stud without ARP grease, or really any grease at all. This is with the grease cleaned off of the previous test. So we have 4,825 PSI max bolt tension to beat when we were using the grease, and we're seeing about 4,100, a 15% loss in tension, probably best to use that thread lube as instructed. Last up on the day, the number one most cited, requested, argued about in the comments section, can you reuse torque to yield bolts? So some YouTubers even say they are better after they're used, taking the stretch out maybe. Any brand that's selling you a car would tell you otherwise on replacement head bolts. So let's see for ourselves. So with the previously torqued in heat cycled bolt now in a stretching test setup like the first one we used on this channel, this used TTY bolt sees about 2,620 PSI. That's 50 PSI above from when new, but well within that normal variance we see with these bolts. Still not bad though, considering this one should be toast right about now. Now measuring how much it stretches compared to a new one, some say this used one should be showing less stretch because the bolt has already stretched. Let's see. So our dial indicator actually maxed out in stroke here. But yeah, tons of stretch compared to new, as you saw. It failed completely as in sheared off at a similar level as a new one. That's predictable. But on the way there, at least up to 6400 PSI where the indicator maxed out, we saw 58 thousandths. A new one sees 36 up here, or around 33 thousandths at 6400 PSI making the increase between 22 to 25 thousandths under the same conditions. That's 65% more stretch, creating more opportunities to push a gasket out or let water into that cylinder. Of course, keep in mind that we're using the factory torque sequence for this used bolt. Maybe we're double yielding it. I couldn't find the underground Goldilocks foot pound rating you're supposed to use for a used TTY bolt, but let us know if you have one down in the comments. This whole scenario would probably be much more interesting if we were wrong. If there was a section at your local hardware store labeled pre-yielded bolts, I doubt that would get very much traffic. So there you have it, some of the better and worse ideas when it comes to cylinder head hardware. Hope we were able to, if nothing else, add more fuel to the fire of squabbles you have with your coworkers in the shop on message boards about this topic. We make videos like this one every Friday. Click subscribe to stick around, and thanks for watching.